Good morning, everyone. It's a blessing to, uh, to be with you all again on this day. We are grateful and thankful to God for the, uh, the gift of life that God has blessed us with and allowed us to uh, be a privilege to uh, witness and to enjoy and to, uh, to recognize again the greatness and the goodness of God. And so we're here today for that same reason, and that is to pray together and uh, ultimately to uh, study the word together. And I pray and trust that you are continuing to trust God, uh, believe God, um, recognize that he is in control of all things, and that whatever he does is always the best possible means. Uh, nothing could be done better than the way that God does it. And uh, for that, we rejoice in reality. We rejoice. It gives us a sense of comfort. It gives us the sense of hope. Uh, it gives us this knowledge that everything is in control, under control. And so uh, we, don't, uh, we, don't, we don't become disturbed by even the, the issues that we're dealing with with the pandemic, uh, the issues that are going on in our economics, uh, because we do know God, God knows what he's doing. and We have to trust him that even in the troubling times, he still knows how to take care of, uh, of his own. And he takes care of all people, to be honest. The word reminds us that he, uh, he allows his son to shine on the just as well as the unjust, he allows it what to rain, it says, on the just as well as on the unjust. So it's, there's no need for us to panic. There's no need for us to be uh, overly concerned about what God is allowing. So I want to ask us just to pause. We're going to go to God in prayer uh, for different ones that are going through seasons of difficulty, people that we know. Uh, some of them I may know personally that you may not know. Some of them you may know. So if you would just bow with me. One of the things I do want to say to us uh, as a church, that any time we say let's pray, uh, we're praying to God. So let's not be doing anything else as much as we possibly can. For those of you at work, I fully understand. Uh, but right now, God deserves our undivided attention. I think uh, all of us can identify with that. If you were, uh, your loved one was to be having surgery, you would not want um that surgeon to be doing anything else other than focusing on the surgery. So same thing, I think God deserves, I know God deserves our reverence and our respect. So when, we, when we're praying to God, let that be the only thing that you focus on. When we're reading the word of God, let be, that be the only thing that you're focusing on because at that moment, that's the only thing that's important. And so let's not be distracted doing other things other than uh, what God has commanded us to do. And even for those of you that are on Facebook, uh, be more concerned about the word of God than you are about the responses that, uh, that come through on Facebook. Amen? Just want to encourage us uh, because we always want to keep our focus on what's most important, and that is God. Father, how we love you, and we thank you again for being God who is good and gracious and kind and merciful and uh, who... Uh, demonstrates to us on a daily basis that you care about us. You remind us in your word that you know when a bird falls to the ground, you know the number of hairs that are on our head. And so we're convinced, Father, that there is nothing about us, no detail about us that you're unaware of because you are that powerful, that you are ever present, uh, that you know every single detail about us. And so we come with reverence, we come with respect, uh, we come with the acknowledgement that you are God and that you're God all by yourself. No assistance, no aid, no help, no counsel, no advice needed on your part. And we come recognizing that you are all wise uh, in that whatever you do, it is always the best means possible. It could not have done, been done a better way, could not have been thought of a better way, could not have been activated in any other way other than what you did it. And so in light of that, Lord, we come this morning praying for uh, family members, those we're yet concerned about. Lord, you know about Renee Johnson and Alan and the issues that they're still dealing with. We pray again, your grace and your mercy be upon them. We pray for our own brother, James Leonard, um, who is currently in the hospital, God. And we just thank you for what you've brought him to and what you're bringing him through. And we just ask him for continued healing in his body, Father. We pray for um, uh, Eula Mae Anderson in Ville Platte, Louisiana, who's going through different illnesses and sickness. And God, we pray for healing in her body. We know you're capable. Uh, we know what you've already brought her through in the past, and we know you're capable of continuing to bring her through. 
And so we entrust her to you. We pray for James, God, and we pray for Elvina, uh, the issues that they are dealing with, God. We know, again, your grace and your mercy prevails. We know you got all power and that whatever you do, it's always well done. So we ask God, again, uh, not demanding you to do anything, but we ask you to heal according to your divine word. He's getting older, so I pray for Brother Jesse Coleman, God, what he's come through, and he had to go in the hospital, but you've allowed him to be released from the hospital, uh, the issues that he's dealing with with dementia and the like. I don't only pray for him, but I pray for Sister Erlene. God, she loves her husband uh, some nearly 70 years now, Lord, and I just pray you continue to uh, keep her, to keep him, uh, uh, to uh, uh, allow her love to show out uh, for him her concern for him. I pray for Demira. You know the issues that she is dealing with right now, God. I know you've got power, and I know you can heal, Lord. So you've done it in the past, and we believe that you can do it in the present. Uh, nevertheless, we're never going to demand nor command, but we ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that your will be done. For my friend, uh, William Walker in South Carolina, I just lift him up before you, God, all of the issues that he is dealing with. I pray for Rev, Lord, that you would heal his body, as you would see fit. I thank you for his wife who stands with him, who is serving him in the capacity that she does. For his church family, Pastor Stratford and others, I just pray that you continue to keep them, Lord, in your perfect peace. Keep them all with your mind, their mind stayed on you. And so, Lord, from Sister Phil uh, to the baby that is yet expected from uh, 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 Tanisha, God, I pray for every member of the Good Shepherd family, Lord, that you would just keep us together as a church family help us to pray for one another help us to bear one another's burdens help us to bear our own burdens help us to do those things lord that are pleasing to you uh, to do those things that uh, that bring glory and honor to you to those things that please you those things that make you smile <laughs> Uh, that's where we want to be, Lord. So we're not going to be selfish even in the midst of what we're dealing with with the pandemic. We're going to still give you the praise and honor that you deserve. We're not in any way going to accuse you of doing something wrong because we know whatever is going on in our world is not you, Lord. The issues, the bad things that go on here, you're not responsible for evil in any kind of way. We have to take responsibility, and we take responsibility. Lord, help us. Uh, to be the church that you have us to be, the people of God uh, that you would have us to be, so we can live in such a manner uh, that you are pleased with our living. So we thank you again for this opportunity to share your word one more time. We pray that you will be with us as we um, see you in the Psalms. Uh, and at the end of the day, Lord, the glory, the honor is yours. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Uh, some of you have already received the, uh, the handout uh, by way of email. If you haven't done that, just check your email and make sure that as best you can, you can share that with uh, others. Uh, and if you know of anybody that may desire the lessons uh, that we have, I, I, I'll be trying to think of who I missed. Uh, but if there's anybody that desires to have the, uh, the pre-printed lessons, uh, please let us know uh, so that we can get those lessons to you ahead of time. Do whatever we need to do. Uh, to make sure that you are always on the same page with everybody else. So the lesson that we're looking at today, again, is entitled The Lord of the Psalms. The Lord of the Psalms. And uh, basically it's saying to us, the Lord God is the primary subject in each book of the Bible. Let's not miss that. The Lord God is the primary subject of each book of the Bible, just as he is in the Psalms. Every poetic line accompanied by music, because that's what a psalm is, is basically a song, a written song accompanied by music, reveal his ways, his words, and his will. He transforms and transcends human experiences for his glory, for his glory, honor and praise in other words he takes whatever is going on in the life of a human being he changes that human being's mind if you will to have his perspective on whatever is going on and he does it in a way that just absolutely blows the mind he does it in a way that exceeds human expectations he does it in a way that exceeds that's the word transcends that exceeds human uh, abilities and that's what the Psalms actually do. That's what they 
they are written for. The proper interpretation, I'm still reading, of the Psalms must be connected to uh, the curses and blessings the Lord God gave Moses concerning Israel. In Deuteronomy 20, 17, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 27, 11 through 26, through 28, 1 through 14. All right, so let's just do that. Just to set up where we are, we're going to be looking at Psalm 20, 128, 20, 129, 130. But I want us to notice how we got to set that up. You know, one of the, one of the amazing things, go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Deuteronomy 27, and uh, we'll all meet there together. One of the amazing things that I've noticed that has gone on in our city since the pandemic has started, I don't know if you all have noticed, uh, buildings are still coming up. Structures are still coming up. Uh, you know, I, uh, basically for the most part, come to the uh, the, the building uh, anywhere from th two to three times a week now, at l at least about three times a week. I'm, I'm I'm actually I actually come to the building, and as I'm making my 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 travels, most of the time, whether it's homestead, most of the time, or if you went on Little Yard, there's a there's this housing development that's coming up uh, on Little Yard. Huge housing is a development. I think almost 300 houses, if you would, uh, that are coming up. And ever since the pandemic, they have not stopped working. Those structures are coming up. And what I'm noticing, just like every other structure, there's a, there's a foundation that they build. And after the foundation is laid, they begin to, uh, to put up a structure. And now everything else that is within that building, I, can't, I haven't seen those houses, what's going on in the houses, the sizes of the rooms and things of that nature. But I see enough of the frame that can tell me whether it's a one story, whether it's a two story, I'm able to see that. But what I do know now that everything else within that house is actually structured by the foundation that has already been laid and the framework that has already been put up. So as a result, when you're going to go in, when I, if I ever go to check it out, I, mean, I am going to go see it. I mean, I just, that's just one of the things I'm intrigued by. Uh, you know, walls are going to be certain places, and those walls are going to be de designated for family areas, uh, for kitchen, for bedroom. Y'all you know what I mean, as far as the house is concerned. But everything is controlled by what the, the foundation that's laid and the framework, if you would, and the structure that is put in place. Those things that go on on the inside uh, uh, can only have so many walls this way. The walls can only be so many feet another way because, again, of the framework and the foundation that has already been laid. So when we look at the Psalms, what we recognize that there is a foundation that has already been laid as it relates to what the Word of God. And for the, the nation of Israel coming out of the Psalms, the foundation was the Ten Commandments. It was the Ten Commandments. It was everything, everything about them was already laid out foundationally in Exodus chapter 20, laid out foundationally in terms of what God expected of them. But the framework that was built on that foundation is what we would call those 632, oh, I'm sorry, 613 613, they would call them commandments, laws, statutes, testimonies. Uh, those were the things that were the framework of which they actually lived in that based on what the foundation that had already been laid by God. And, of course, the framework was also set by God. So within that framework, this is how they were to live. And God established that in Deuteronomy chapter 27 as they're getting ready to go into the promised land. And he, he, he does it to me in a, in a very unique way. Uh, I'm going to pick it up at verse um, 11, just for the structure. Uh, he says, and Moses commanded the people uh, on, that, on the same day, saying, these shall stand, these shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people when you have crossed over the Jordan, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin, and these shall stand on Mount Ebal to curse Reuben, Gad, Ger Asher, Zebulon, Dan, and Naphtali. So again, you've got the 12 tribes of Israel that are represented there. You've got six tribes that are on one mountain that is on the Mount Gerizim representing what blessing. Then you've got six tribes that are on Mount Ebal, and they are what representing cursing. Notice what he says that they ought to do. Uh, the Levites shall speak with a loud voice and say to all the men of Israel, Curses the one 
who makes ca a carve or a bolden image, an abomination to the Lord, the works of the hands of the craftsman, and sets up in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Curse is the one who treats his father or his mother with contempt. And all the people shall say, Amen. Curse is the one who moves his neighbor's landmark. And all the people shall say, Amen. Curse is the one who makes the blind to wander off the road. And all the people shall say, Amen. Curse is the one who perverts justice. One of the big issues that are go that's going on today uh, will be referred to social justice. But the Bible simply says justice. Curse is the one who perverts justice due the strangers, the fatherless, and widow. And all the people shall say amen. Curse is the one who lies with his father's wife because he has uncovered his father's bed. And all the people shall say amen. Curse is the one who lies with any kind of animal. And all of the people shall say amen. Curse is the one who lies uh, with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. And all the people shall say amen. Curse is the one who lies with his mother-in-law. And all the people shall say amen. Curse is the one who attacks his neighbors secretly. And all of the people shall say amen. Curse is the one who takes a bribe to slay an innocent person. And all the people shall say amen. Curse is the one who does not confirm, notice, does not confirm all the words of the law by observing them. And all the people shall say amen. We've got to keep reading just to get the context. Because now what we've dealt with is the people on the Mount Ebal who are representing the curses for being disobedient to God. Now let's look at those who are on, on, on Mount Gerizim who represent what? The blessings. Verse chapter 28 verse 1. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set on you high above all the nations of the earth and all of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you shall be when you come in, and blessed you shall be when you go out. The Lord will cause it. That's will cause your enemies to rise against you, to be defeated before your face. They shall come out one way and, and flee before you seven ways. I just should read up to verse 6. So now, he's explaining that as a result of this Deuteronomic covenant, this second law that God has now given them, which was established, if you would, on the Mosaic law that he gave in Exodus chapter 20, what we call the Ten Commandments, we now interpret the Psalms in light of the blessings and curses of Deuteronomy based on, again, the foundational commandments that God gave to Israel in Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 17. So when we go to the Psalms now, going back to the handout, going back to Psalm 128, uh, the reason that I'm going to the Psalm, because remember, we're in our reading and we ought to be reading one chapter a day. We started reading at Psalm 120, and today basically we will be reading Psalm uh, 129. Uh, but I just wanted to just to help us to see. We're looking at what we read on yesterday. We'll look at uh, uh, what we read today and also what we will read tomorrow just to give us a sense. And remember, one of the things that I do want to encourage us in the process of our reading, don't, don't read ahead. Don't read fast. What you want to do is to read what you read, and then, and then I think I think last Sunday uh, it was really wonderful. Both Pastor Johnson at Sunday school and uh, uh, Reverend Skinner at uh, the, uh, the 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 morning worship talked about the word meditate, and the word the idea again is to mutter, is to think, it's to it's to it's to it's to recall it and allow it to work through in your mind. Read the Psalms, read the chapters that you're reading, 
and allow God to speak to you. Might just be one verse in there that speaks to where you are today. So don't read it with the rush to get to the next chapter. Read it with the, the goal to see what is God saying to me or what, what am I learning about God, about myself as I read this particular chapter on today. And maybe I should have already been saying that uh, ahead of time, and I do apologize if I hadn't. But it's not for us to rush through the reading. The goal is, is to see God and to see ourselves in light of the word. So when we look at Psalm uh, 128, we're saying now it's the Lord of the Psalms. The goal is, what do we see? What do we see about the Lord when we read the psalm? So let's just do that for our edification. For those of you who didn't get a chance to read it on yesterday, you can join us in today in reading Psalm 128. It says, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. It's when you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine. In the very heart of your house, your children, he says, like olive plants uh, all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Uh, the Lord bless you out of Zion and may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. My goodness, that's wonderful. So. So when we look at this particular psalm, it was just to say a synthesis, to synthesize what the psalm is talking about. We already know, again, the title of it would be the fear of the Lord. Uh, uh, but, but basically what we're looking at, happiness in life, happiness in life reflected reverent obedience to the Lord. When we look at this particular psalm as it relates to Israel, as it relates to the covenant, uh, well, the blessings and the cursings happiness in life, and we use the word blessed, um, uh, reflected reverent obedience to the Lord. So he's basically saying to the people of the day, if you want to be happy, obey God. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a simple way to say it. If you want to be happy, obey, obey God. If you want to be blessed, obey God. But understanding that the blessing that we, what we're talking about here is controlled by what God said to them on the basis of the covenant that was established by Moses, Exodus chapter 20, and also the things that he says in Deuteronomy 27 and Deuteronomy 28. That's how it was structured for them. So uh, you, got a, you got a blank there if you would just fill in the blank. He supplied daily sustenance. He supplied daily sustenance. So uh, one, of the, one of the things that happened in the fear of the Lord, and we talk about the fear of the Lord, what we're talking about reverence. We're talking about respect. Uh, and, and, and brothers and sisters, I mean this because, you know, some, sometimes, sometimes I, I think that we, we, we don't fear God, I'll be honest with you. I don't think we fear God uh, as we should. I'm going to just say it that way. I don't want to say that we don't fear God like we used to. Uh, I'm just going to say we don't fear God as we should. Let me just use that terminology because I believe back in the day there was no difference. That people, there were some people that had reverence for God, respect for God, and that's been just the reality of humanity ever since. You know, there are some people that had the respect of God based upon Abel who offered to God what he wanted God to, what, what God prescribed to, to give him, to give God. But then there are, there are those who, like Cain, I'm going to give God what I want to give him. You know, he's just going to have to accept what I got. So that has always been the reality of humanity. I know sometimes we kind of want to make it sound like that there were more godly people at a certain point. But I just believe in all points of history that there are those who choose to obey God and then that you got those who choose not to obey God. You've always had believer and unbeliever. You always had those who are part of the light, part of the darkness. That has always been a reality. Uh, but I'm just saying, sometimes we don't fear God as we should. And what I mean by that is that is that to respect him, um, just a simple thing. Remember what I, remember I, said, I, said, I said a simple thing. One of the things that we're going through right, in, right now in the pandemic, it's important that, well, again, when the word of God, when we are praying to God, or when we're reading the word of God, or explaining the word of God, reverence for God would say, at that time, there's nothing more important to me than to hear God. That, that's what it would say. 
Nothing more important to me than to talk to God. Nothing more important to me than to give ear to the person that's praying to God, to, enter, to, to agree with that individual. That's what we talk about by reverence and, and respect. And so if I'm doing something else other than that, then it's not giving God the respect. I want you to think about that. How oftentimes in our own lives, if we're talking to somebody and, you know, they are, they are on the phone and texting or they're looking at something else, um, their head is down, how, how do we feel about that? How do we, how do we, because what we are saying it appears that what I've got to say to you now, right now, is not that important. So what I'm saying to us is important for us to what? He said, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who does what? Who walks in his ways. We demonstrate our reverence for God in terms of how we obey his word. I don't know what it is that God has been saying to you as a person here lately, uh, but the, the re your, your the indication that you fear God, that you respect God, that you have reverence for God is how you respond to what he says. So he says, he says, when you eat the labor of your hand, and again, this is, remember, the De De Deuteronomic law that God said, if you obey me, you know, he's going to make sure that they always had, uh, um, they were going to a land flowing with milk and honey, and he was going to always see to it that their crops were going to be blessed and all of that. So he says, when you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy. And it shall be well with you. So we're looking at the fact he supplied daily sustenance. And that's the same thing for us. We have to believe uh, that God is the one who provides for us. That's amazing that we're going through this pandemic. We're going to the economic times that we're going through. Uh, but God is continuing to provide. And there are people who are listening right now that would say, man, it's been rough, though. I've had to sit in lines uh, for three hours and four hours um, you know, just to be able to get some food for my family. But, but that's God's way of supplying. That's God's way of making sure that you, you have it. Um, um, that it, it, it's, a, it's a whole lot different than having to plant the crops and wait for it to grow and hopefully that it rains and all of that kind of thing. God is still supplying whatever those needs are. Why? Because it's also showing a connection. David, David said this. He said a wonderful thing. He says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Watch this. Nor his seed, listen to the word, begging bread. I never saw that. David said, I, never, I just never saw that because what David understood is that the Father, God, uh, the one that we fear, the one that we respect, the one that, that we, we recognize as God, he supplies. He, he, he takes care. He may not always do it what I, what I, what I think it may be. You know, um, I think some of us would like filet mignon. It may not be, but he will supply Oscar Mayer. You know, so whatever way he chooses to do it, you give him thanks for it because notice the thing that we pray in Matthew chapter 6, right? Give us, those of us who are New Testament believers, give us this day our daily bread. And we trust that God does it different ways. Sometimes you do have to stand in the line. Sometimes it is that you got to be online and you're frustrated uh, by the fact that you can't. The website breaks down. You, you're frustrated. But God, God supplies. He supplies. He supplies. He will take care of his own. You have to believe that. But he notice again, it's attached to what? The fear of the Lord. It's attached to obedience to the Lord. And so if I'm not obeying him, sometimes if there's a lack in my life, what I've got to do is check myself. It's not an issue with God. It just might be something that I need to be doing differently as it relates to seeing him providing for my needs. It reminds me of verse uh, three. It says, your, your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Uh, your children like, vine, like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Now, again, in this case, he is, he is using the terminology reverent to, uh, in reference to men. And, of course, most of the Bible is, is, a quite, is quite patriarchal, where God refers to men. He's talking, uh, you hear the language, the brethren. Uh, the men, um, and yeah, that's a great reference there, just based upon that Near Eastern culture, if you will. But 
when he uses that terminology, it's also an inclusive of the fact that as a result of this man who obeys God, uh, uh, the people that are around him are blessed as a result. So now, what he says, number, number two on the handout, uh, you already see that he produced, based on the Deuteronomic law, based on um, uh, what, he, what he tells Israel in Exodus chapter 20, he says he produced fruitful families. Listen, one of the, one of the things you understand, the people of that day, they were agrarian. They were, they live off the farm, right? And what better way to have large farms um, uh, where you could actually make money, you could actually provide for your family uh, to have many children who could help work the farm. They weren't born just for that reason, but it was, it was, it was part of the, the economy of their day. And so what he would say, looking at the fear of the Lord, what he would say, it was, it was a blessing in that for them to have children based on, watch this, that they lived in an agrarian society. That's why, you know, when you read the Old Testament and you would see that women didn't bear children. We read about Sarai. We read about Hannah. We read about uh, uh, the different women in the Bible who didn't have children and how that was such a, uh, a societal uh, uh, difficulty for those who didn't and how they felt so blessed when God would allow them to have children because it was what? It was attached to the covenant that God had promised that they would have children. And he's, that's why in, in, you know, in Psalm 127 he says, blessed are those who has, you know, who has many in their quiver. Uh, he talks about it in, in verse 3 uh, of, of Psalm 127. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. That the fruit of the room is his reward like arrows in the hand of a warrior. He's just pointing out, again, the blessing of children. Now, when we come to the New Testament, no, 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 let me say this before I, before I go on. Um, if God has blessed us with children, uh, especially right now, what's going on with the pandemic, what's going on with the decisions, whether we homeschool, we keep our children home, whether we allow them to go to school, whatever those, those, those difficulties that we're that some of you are having to deal with right now make sure that you still see your child as a blessing and not as a burden yeah 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 make sure that you still have pleasure in your children and you don't see those children as a pain why because ultimately they come from the lord they've been blessed you're blessed to have them because they come what from the Lord, I know, I know how difficult some things must be. I have an idea. Let me just say it. I have an idea of how difficult these decisions that you all are having to make right now must be. Um, uh, but, but at the end of the day, you never, ever want to uh, be unappreciative for what the Lord has already blessed you with that even though you're in the situation that you're in right now, don't feel now that you're not blessed because you have them. But understand, you are blessed because you have them. And God will what? continue to provide what you need for the blessing that he has given you. But what is required? It requires obedience. It requires reverence. It requires respect. For that to happen, so 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 don't 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 see your children as a as a burden right now, folks. Let's not let's not do that. Let's let's still see our children as a blessing uh, from the Lord. Now, another thing that we have to keep in mind when we come to the New Testament, it, it that 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 attachment to having children is not there. Yeah, that was for Israel. That was a promise that God gave to Israel. One of the indications of your blessing is that you have children and that you have a lot of children. That you be blessed with many children. It's an awful reality today that folk put down folk with a whole lot of children today. That is just, I think that's just one of the most miserable things that people can do. The Bible clearly says that children are a blessing. So, so for those who cannot have children these days, uh, it is not that they're cursed in any way. It's not, that's not the suggestion at all because it is not a promise in Scripture based upon the new co the covenant relationship that we have through Jesus Christ that was established. You know, we read it in Luke chapter 22, a new covenant I give unto you. Not having children today is not an indication of the curse. Because remember, Jesus Christ took care of the curse on the cross. He took care of the matter. So, 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 so we pray for those couples that, 
uh, desire to have a child and aren't able to have a child. Uh, because of, again, these medical issues that are going on, whatever uh, may be physiologically um, uh, uh, difficult or different in their bodies that don't allow them to be able to produce children or to bear children, we pray for them. We support them. Uh, we exercise, if you will, uh, the ability for adoption that, that God has given, those kinds of things. And we do those things. But, but don't consider a person not blessed because remember, this is a total different covenant relationship than what we have today based upon our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But he would say in that time, they again, they produce fruitful families. And then finally, uh, he would say in verse 5 and 6, they have long life. He gave them long life. The Lord bless you out of Zion. And Zion was just another word for Jerusalem. He may and may see the good of Jerusalem. Again, the city of God, it was the city of David. Uh, and then he would, he would also say, all the days of your life, yes. Now notice the indication of long life. You may see your children's children, peace be upon Israel. Yeah, one of the indications, again, of blessing during that time was an indication of long life. Uh, he, would, he would remind him, you know, when, you, when you're reading um, Exodus chapter, you know, and you don't have to, you don't have to turn there. Exodus chapter 20, when he gave them the command uh, concerning, uh, he said, he said in verse 12, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. All right, all right, all right. So, so think about that. He says that under that, under that covenant. But remember, he allowed his son to die at 33. Not that his son was cursed, not at all. He was, he was God, you know. So when we look at those covenants, you gotta, you've got to be careful to make sure that you don't always make the covenants that we read in the Old Testament binding on what the covenants that we have in the New Testament because it, it, was, it, was, it was a different, watch this, God had now structured it. That we had a foundation of Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we, we have a, 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 a framework that is built upon the word that God has now given to the apostles, if you will. Uh, prior to that, we had that framework that was based upon what God had given to Moses, and Moses would had given it to the children of Israel. It's the same thing that the prophets would remind them of. But the bottom line is that we're saying for us, when we look at that song, what is said to us, the you and I, that we ought to fear the Lord. Um, uh, God didn't promise us long life. He didn't promise us that we would we would live to be 100 and 106 and, and all of that. He never, there's nowhere in the covenant relationship that we have with him currently that he says that to us. But, but what he does say to us, that no matter how long we live, we ought to fear the Lord. Let's go to, let's go to Psalm, Psalm uh, 129, quite quick. He says, many a time they have afflicted me from my youth. Let Israel now say many a time they have afflicted me from my youth. Yet they have not prevailed against me. The plow was plowed on my back. They made their furrows long. The Lord is righteous. He has cut in pieces the cords of the wicked. Let all those who hate Zion be put to shame and turned back. Let them be as the grass on the housetops, which withers before it, is grown, before it grows up, with which the reaper does not fill his hand, nor he who binds sheaves his arms. Let, I'm sorry, neither let those who pass by them say, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. So what is this psalm um, um, uh, saying? We see what the righteousness of the Lord, because remember, doesn't matter what psalm you read, you're going to see the Lord, because ultimately it helps us to see what the Lord is doing and what, how the Lord is revealing himself in terms of transformation in people's lives and in terms of how he transcends those human experiences. So in this one, what's happening? A synthesis, if you would be, it would say, adversity and triumph, in that case, in Psalm 129, reveal the righteousness of the Lord. I love that. I love that. Notice again, he starts off by saying, uh, filling in the blank right here, relief from affliction came in his timing. Relief from affliction came in his timing. That's pretty cool when you think about it. The psalm is reminding, he says, many a time they have afflicted me from my youth. 
And that word affliction means that they have caused me problems. They have been trouble for me. Now, one of the things we got to remember, God never told us, folk, that we weren't going to have trouble. As a matter of fact, here's what he says. He said, in this world, in this world, you will have tribulation. But notice what he says. But be of good cheer. Why? For I have overcome the world. I'm telling you, if you listen to anybody that's trying to tell you in this life, you're not supposed to have any trouble, you better do like Forrest Gump. Run as fast as you can because that is not the truth. Je Job actually said this way. <laughs> he, said, he said, man, uh, uh, this life is, 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 it has sorrows and is full of trouble. And the reality is some of us have more trouble than others. Some experience less trouble than others. But trouble is a part of that, a part of that reality. But notice what he reminds us, that relief from affliction comes in his timing. And I think, I think most of us can identify with that. You have had some pains in your life. You've had some troubles in your life. And you've had some trials in your life. And if you like me, the moment you felt that pain, the moment you recognized that trouble, you started praying. And can I get a witness? You started praying, Lord, help me with this pain. Lord, help me with this trial. And you know, when, when we pray that for the most part in our mind, we know what we wanted God to do. We wanted that thing to go for a little while. And at some point, we wanted it to disappear. We wanted it to be gone. I don't want to feel the pain. I want the trouble to be gone. And I want it instant as instant coffee can be. I want it gone right here right now but notice what the psalmist is saying because God is a righteous God even when we have affliction he doesn't alleviate that affliction until he feels like it until he's ready watch this until he knows we got it if you will notice again how he says it uh the powers in verse verse in verse uh two three the the plowers plowed on my back they made furrows long. He's, he's using a metaphor. He said, man, these folks gave me so much trouble. It was almost like taking a plow. And they were plowing on my back. And, Lord, it felt like it was so long that they were making some long rows. I know that, that, that for most of us, we can't understand that. But, you know, back in the day when they used to, when they used to form, in order for them to make a row, they had some, in some cases it was a one-sided plow. And sometimes that row was long, man. And what he's saying is that this trouble that some people have afflicted me with, it is long and it is lasting. And they just plowed, I mean, they plowed some long furrows in my back. They, they just wore me out, man. I mean, I felt the pain. I felt, I felt the pain. Pressure, and I'm asking the Lord, how long is this going to last? I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. And guess what? And guess what? He wake me up another day, and it was still there. And he woke me up two weeks later, and it was still there. And he woke me up two months later, and it was still there. And he woke me up six months later, it was still there. He woke me up a year later, it was still there. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? He woke you up. He, he woke you up. He woke you up. And even in the midst of your pain, it was demonstrated that he can take care of his own. The psalmist was saying, and watch this, he was righteous even in my pain. Oh, yeah, he's, he's righteous even in my pain. And there are people right now that are listening. You're going through some, some sorrow, some difficulty, some affliction. But, but understand, God is still righteous in the midst of it all. Adam's decision to disobey God has brought on to us all so many things that we never even had an idea these things were going to happen. But God has been righteous through it all. There's nothing that we can accuse God of being wrong. It was wrong for you to do that because even whatever he allows, even in the affliction, in his own way, he gives us the ability to bear abundance. That's why, that's why James would say, uh, 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 um, Count it all joy when you're going through various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith will produce endurance, but you got to let endurance have its perfect work so that you, what, you can be complete and entire, lacking nothing. That's a purpose for the affliction. That's a purpose for the trial. So he says relief from aff uh, affliction came in his own timing in verse 1 through 4, and look at verse 5 through 8. 
Vengeance over enemies were in his control. Look at verse 5. Let all those who hate Zion. What he's talking about? The city of God, the place where that represents where God lives. All those who hate Zion, that will be those who do not believe. That will be those who rebel against God. There will be those who do not trust in God. He says, be put to shame and turn back. Let them be as the grass on the housetop. You know, ba basically in those days uh, that you had flat roofs and, and as a result of, you know, they put rock and, and, and the like dirt on top of those, uh, those, those roofs to, in order to make it, you know, sealed where it wouldn't leak and all of that sort of thing. But because, again, of just nature, whether it would be a bird that would go on, on top of the roof or whether it would be just the, 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 the leaves and uh, the things that are, that, are, that are moving through the air, once those seeds would fall in that ground, they would literally take root, but they couldn't take deep root. Why? Because the sun would scorch them. So what it's saying that even though they are, God allows affliction, he doesn't allow that affliction to come where it prevails over you. It doesn't come where you say, I'm giving up. I can't make it anymore. God gives you the ability to overcome what the afflictions, whatever again, what the enemy would try to do to you. So he says, uh, 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 which which wither before verse the end of verse six, which withers before it grows up, with which the reaper does not feel his hand. In other words, they they are afflicting me, but they can't do it to the point that you know the, when they talk about the the. Uh, the reaper does not feel his hand. That would be as they're, you know, they're cutting vegetation and the like, whether it's wheat or whatever. But, but, but they can't do it so much that they are fulfilled in what they're doing. God has a way of providing what's needed before they can be filled. Nor he who builds sheaves in his arm. In other words, they don't prevail to me to the point that they walking around talking about, look at what they did, look at what they accomplished, because ultimately God is saying, I'm, he's going to have the last word on that. Neither let those who pass by them say, oh, look at those blessed people. No, because God, the Bible clearly says, God knows how to take vengeance on those who mistreat those whom he has blessed. Yes, you know, Romans chapter 12, we look at that uh, and just in terms of the practical things that God says to us in his word. Uh, he reminds us, he says, in verse, I'm picking up at verse 17. He says, repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written. Watch this. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Leviticus 19, verse 18. If you didn't took it out of your Bible, here's what he says. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Yes. So he would even say, even in that, in that, in that setting, that he would say that they may prevail against you. No, 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 they may afflict you, but he would say they will not prevail. Oh, yeah, COVID may, may, it may, it may afflict many as it already has. And as a result, some may even die. But I want you to understand, those of us who understand the relationship that we have with God and the promises that we have as a result of those promises in Jesus Christ, even death cannot prevail over us. Yeah. How do I know that? Sunday morning. He got up, y'all. He did. He got up. And so though it looked like on Friday it was over, it looked like. I mean, Mary and them are at the, at the grave, man. They are cry, uh, they're at, the, at the cross and they're crying. I mean, the, even to the point it gets dark on the planet. They got to take his body off, and they see that. They got to put him in a borrowed tomb. But y'all know, when they went Sunday morning, when they went Sunday morning, they couldn't find him because death could not even prevail. And so I keep saying it. If the worst thing that happens to a believer is that I die as a result of COVID-19, guess what? It does not prevail over me. That enemy does not get me. As a matter of fact, the Bible would actually say the last enemy to be destroyed is death. 
It is an enemy. It does want to prevail. It does want to take over us. But those of us who have a relationship with Jesus Christ can live with the reality. We got the hope of resurrection that God has promised to us. And here's the final one. We're looking at Psalm 130. And again, just a way of uh, just allowing for some edification. Let's read it. It says, out of the depths I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? There is forgiveness with you, and you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. That is good news for us, y'all. So let's, let me fill in the blanks for us. Uh, 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 and then just so we don't have to be able to get through all of the, 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 uh, the first today. Um, but here it is. The, the, the synthesis of this particular of psalm would be distress from disobedience for us, those again in, under the Deuteronomic law. Second law that God gave to Moses under the, the law, the Mosaic law that God gave to Moses in Exodus chapter 20. Uh, distress from disobedience required the mercy of the Lord. Um, uh, four things they did. Number one, they begged that he would hear. Number two, they revered his pardon. You see that in verse three and four. Here's where you have the blank. They eagerly waited on him. 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 And then number four, they expected his redemption. That's verse seven through eight. So let's go back over it now. Look again, just for the time that we have. He says, out of the depths I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. Oh, what are you saying? I'm in trouble. I'm, and, and watch this. I'm in deep trouble. It's, it's the depths, if you will. But, but I cried to the Lord. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about you all, but boy, I tell you, in, this, in, these last, uh, in these last five months, I'll be honest, I have cried more, I've cried more than I've ever cried in my life. And, and my tears have just been more about uh, just the concern for people um, uh, and just in terms of sometimes a lack of knowing how to respond to the things that are going on, uh, my heart goes out to, you know, we're talking about uh, almost 160,000 people uh, that have died as a result of this COVID-19. We're talking about since March, you know, uh, middle of March or the beginning of March, whatever. Uh, 160,000 people, that's 160,000 other people, at least one other person. And so when I start adding that up, I'm talking about now millions of people have been affected, if you will, as a result of this COVID-19. Just, just you know, the doctors, the the, the people in medicine. Uh, right now, the economy. That's just, I mean, it's just chaotic. What's going on? We're talking about, uh, you know, they're canceling football season in college, and all of those kinds of things are happening right now as we're talking. And all of those things are going to have a domino effect on people. I'm talking about to the point, people who, just, who, who, sell, who sell toilet tissue, uh, their company is going to suffer not having a football season because it's all connected, folk. So now, what he's saying, in that depth, in the, in the deep poverty of life, in those, those deep uh, uh, moments of illness when it arises, he said, I cried to the Lord. Somebody right now, I don't know where you are. It's okay to holler at. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to scream. As a matter of fact, I think, I think they're showing something on Channel 11. I think it's on Channel 11, KHOU, that every Friday at 5 o'clock, there's a young lady that they show it that just supposed to go out in, her, in your yard or wherever you are and just scream, you know? But I'm saying if you're going to cry, make sure you cry out to the low. Don't just be crying as though you're hopeless and helpless. No, the psalmist says, as a result of my covenant relationship with God, as a result of now I recognize I've been disobedient to God. I haven't done what God has said that I ought to do. Now I need his mercy. 
And that's, you know, that's the good thing about God. Doesn't matter how bad you mess up, it's okay to call on him. Yeah, it's okay to call on him. Doesn't matter how, how grievous your sin has been, your iniquity, whatever the transgressions that we have committed against God, it's okay. And he knows how to respond to our transgression is because here's the reality. He already knew we were going to do it, so he made preparations for it through his son, Jesus Christ, and he gave us forgiveness. And so notice what he says. He says in verse 3 and 4, he says, if you mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? Lord, I don't know about you all, but I'm sure glad the Lord is not marking all of my stuff. Woo, woo. You know, just pinpointing how sometimes how people can do every little thing you do. You did this, and 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 you did this. Boy, if the Lord dealt with us that way, y'all, none of us would be here, or we wouldn't be here the way that we are. But thank God. God, he does not mark our iniquities like human beings do. Notice again, he says, uh, oh, Lord, who could stand? But, but, here's the, here's the opposite. There is forgiveness with you. Watch this. That you may be feared. Yeah, 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 yeah. I recognize I, I didn't respect God. I didn't revere God, and I disobeyed him. I did my own thing. Now, I'm in trouble. So I cry out. To the very God that I chose not to obey. But here is what I do. Why do I do that? Because I know the very God that I disobeyed is the only one that has power to get me out of whatever situation I'm in. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Listen. 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 I have to admit, when I, I mean, I was coming up as a lad in Ville Platt, and I do remember some of those times. I do remember that. Uh, I, you know, I pretty much came home with busted pants and stuff pretty much every day. You know, my mom, you know how we used to put them patches on your pants. My mom had to patch a lot of my clothes. I mean, I was, I was roughhousing. We were wrestling. We play tops, you know, and we, you know, that kind of thing. We're having fun at school at James Stephen, you know, the elementary school, uh, where I attended when we go to, we go to recess y'all young people. Y'all, some of y'all don't know what that is. Y'all call it, um, um, got a PE, uh, P -E, yeah, physical ed. We went to recess, you know, and so, and so I would mess up a lot. I, and I got a lot of whippings as a boy. I did. I'm talking about from my mom because I was, I was kind of, yeah, I was kind of hard-headed, you know, but here was the deal. My mom would whip me. She would spank me, whatever it was, because I disobeyed her. But guess what? At some point of the day, after my mom whipped me and I was kind of not too happy with her after she did it, but you know what? I knew who had the food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I'd be getting hungry. And now the same person, the same person that I disobeyed who whipped me was the same person that I went to to get some comfort. Mama, can I get something to eat? <laughs> and guess what? Because of my mom's love, she would always supply what her little boy needed. Praise the Lord. And that's what God is, what he's saying here. He says, but there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. My mom would forgive me. God would forgive. God will give another chance. But that is so that we can go back to what? Being respectable. My mom would say, you going to do that again? I, of course, then and back in the day, I was lying. No, mama, we'll do that. <laughs> I went back the next day, did the same thing. But I always remember what my mom said. That's why when I was coming home, man, I was crying before I even got to the house. Because I knew, I knew that I had done something that disrespected my mom. But mom was the one that I counted on for forgiveness. We're done. Look at verse 5. It says, it says, I wait for the Lord. Oh, my soul waits, and, and in his word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. yes more than those who watch for the morning. My soul waits on the Lord. That's why we're saying, uh, number two, they, they revered his pardon. They respected it. They wanted it. They desired his forgiveness. Then they eagerly waited on him, uh, knowing this, that when, whenever we rebel against God, whenever we do something against God, it doesn't mean that he automatically turns things around just right away for us because there are times that we got to wait on him. There are times that uh, I say some crazy stuff to Marcia that my pardon, my saying I'm sorry doesn't allow me to just see a smile right away. Sometimes I got to wait. And brother, some of y'all understand what I'm saying. Sometimes I just got to wait because it just doesn't turn around as fast as I think it should. All right? But watch this. But I wait 
And that's what he's saying when it comes when it comes to his forgiveness. We wait on the Lord. Listen, folk. I don't have a bit of doubt right now that this world is under God's judgment. I don't have a bit of doubt. Uh, I think the last data that I'm reading that this pandemic has affected people on six of the seven continents of the world. And the only one that is really not affected, or maybe could be today, is Antarctica. But why not Antarctica? Because it ain't populated with people. But wherever you got people, there's a possibility that people are now affected with this pandemic. That's pretty remarkable. Six of the seven continents of the world have been affected with COVID-19, other than the cold continent of Antarctica, where it ain't a whole lot of folk who go there. They just go there for a while and they get up out of there because it's extremely cold. Amen. But notice again what he's saying. What the encouragement is, is that we got to wait on the Lord. And while we are waiting, how do we wait on him? Notice what he says in verse five. And in his word, I do hope. Yes. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. What morning? I don't know. We got to wait on the Lord. <laughs> what night are we going to have to come in the morning? Nights we got to go through? I have no idea. But we're going to wait on the Lord. Why? Because we know what God is capable of doing. We know the kind of power that our Lord has. Because he's the Lord what, of the Psalms. He reminds us in verse 6. He says, my soul waits for the Lord. And more than those. Because what he's talking about. When you talk about Zion. You talked about Jerusalem. You're talking about the protection that they had around the cities and the like. What he's saying is that the soldiers would anticipate. After they're done with their night watch. They would anticipate somebody coming to relieve them. What, he, what, what the psalmist is saying. Man, I'm waiting for what the Lord, the Lord's forgiveness, my hope is in the Lord. I'm waiting more than a soldier that's been been on, on post all night long, waiting from, for, for relief from the one that's going to now take over. God is saying that we've got to wait on him that way. Watch now, verse 7 and 8. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. The word hope here is a word of expect expectancy. Sean talked about that uh, last, last week. It's enthused, excited expectancy for with the Lord there is mercy and with him is abundant redemption and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities I've got I've got an aunt uh, Dorothy Dorothy Childs who said this way she said that there have been some times that life you know life throws you some curves and sometimes you're just so tired and she said she admitted that there were some days that she could not get through you know, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, you know, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to all. He, she say it, it, it was just like that. She was just so tired sometimes from the trials of life. And, and the only thing and, and daughter say that she could say was, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know what you're going through right now. But, but if, you could just, if you could just muster those words, Lord, have mercy. I, 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 I can give you an assurance that you, you will feel better because you're looking to the one who you know, who has already proven to you, who has the track record, who already proven to you what he's able to do. Just have your hope in the Lord, not in the White House, not in Congress, not in the Supreme Court, not in the state government, not in city government, but have your hope in the Lord. Why? Because he reminds us that the, he is the, the, that he is the Lord of mercy. And we see that all throughout the Psalms. Father, how we love you, how we thank you, how we bless you and praise you for your greatness, your goodness, and your kindness toward us. We pray, God, that as we read through these Psalms, as we meditate through these psalms, that we will think less about ourselves, but we will think more about you. Because when we read the 150 of these psalms that you've given to us, there's not one time that the name of the Lord is not mentioned. So we thank you, God, for knowing that you are the Lord of the psalms, and we will take refuge in knowing that you know how to transform and transcend our lives no matter what our human experience may be. To you we give the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, until we meet again, God love you, God keep you, stay safe, and make sure you meet somebody that's not saved and ask them, are they saved? I love you.
Bye-bye.